Dealing with massive data sets can be daunting, especially when handling extensive text data like review data sets or customer service chat logs. Is there a more optimized and a better way to deal with big data sets? Well, in today's video, I'll walk you through Rapid's QDF 24.08 release, which aims to optimize larger data sets on various tasks such as joins, etc., without you having to change a single line of code. So, without wasting any further time, let's kickstart the video. Pandas is a very popular library that helps you analyze data really quickly. Just to put things in perspective, Pandas is gaining popularity by the day. In 2023 alone, it saw a 50% increase in usage. Currently, there are over 9.5 million Pandas users worldwide, which are contributing to the vast ecosystem of resources and support. If I count the total number of GitHub repositories that are built on top of Pandas, the number exceeds 1.5 million. But there is an issue with respect to Pandas. As the size of the data set increases, the time it takes for Pandas to process the data grows exponentially. This means that for large enterprise AI data sets, the execution time can become very long. Processing strings with CPU-only Pandas is extremely slow, thus making it impractical to handle large-scale tabular text data using Pandas alone. Is there a solution out there? Well, the answer is yes. A lot of you might recollect that I had created a video on Rapids QDF some time back. Rapids is basically a collection of open source GPU accelerated data science and AI libraries. QDF is a Python GPU data frame library for loading, joining, aggregating and filtering data. Rapids QDF can now process up to 2.1 billion rows of tabular text data using Pandas code on the GPU by significantly increasing the number of characters supported in strings. NVIDIA had announced during GTC 2024 that Rapids QDF accelerates Pandas nearly 150 times with zero code changes. And given the potential that it offers, Google then announced that Rapids QDF is available by default on Collab at Google I.O. In this release of QDF, you have a concept called as unified memory. So imagine a use case wherein you have a 20 GB CSV file that you want to play around with. And if you have a T4 GPU, which is around 16 GB, and if you have 16 GB of RAM, you can kind of combine the powers of both RAM and GPU to carry out your task. QDF now uses CUDA unified memory to enable scaling of Pandas workloads beyond GPU memory. What does unified memory mean? Basically, unified memory provides a single address space spanning both the CPUs and GPUs in the system, enabling virtual memory allocations larger than the available GPU memory. And if there is a requirement wherein you have to move data from GPU to CPU, then even that is possible using paging. This approach has drastically improved QDF's performance in joins, aggregation, group by functions, etc., which I'll show you in the next part of the video now. So without wasting any further time, let's jump to the coding section to show you how amazing the recent QDF update is. Let me now start the entire coding piece and show you how amazing QDF 24.08 version is. Before I start, I'm running this entire piece of code in Google Collab. I have access to a T4 GPU and I'll validate this by running the command nvidia-smi. As you can clearly see for this particular session, I've been allocated a Tesla T4. So that is what I have right now. Now in order to show you the amazing speed up that you can achieve with this version of QDF, I'll quickly download some data and play around with it. So there is a data set that is hosted on Kaggle called as 3 million LinkedIn jobs and skills 2024. So I'll quickly run this command to download this particular data set in my current Google Collab session. So I'll quickly run this. Now given that I'm running this on Google Collab, so there are no Kaggle related installation that I have to make. But if you're trying to execute this entire script locally, then you will have to install Kaggle and then basically download this particular data set. 
So we have successfully downloaded a 2 gigabyte file. So I'll quickly show you the file as well. So here is the file that is there. So it's basically a zip file. I'll have to unzip it, which is my next command. So I'll go down here and I'll unzip the file. So it's kind of extracting the first file now, which is job underscore skills dot CSV. It's now extracting the second file, which is job underscore summary dot CSV. So it has successfully extracted the three files that we require for our analysis. So let's go forward. The entire analysis that I'll be doing right now will be first using base Python and pandas. Second is where QDF will show its magic. Now I'll quickly unhide the cell. The first thing that I'll do is I'll import pandas and matplotlib. So I'll quickly run the cell. Now let's start our entire activity of comparing pandas against QDF by importing a CSV file. So I have a CSV file called as job underscore summary dot CSV. I'll quickly run the pd dot read CSV command and save this entire data set into a data frame called as job underscore summary underscore df. And I'll kind of time this entire function using the time function here. Okay, so let's quickly run the cell. So we have successfully loaded this particular CSV file into jobs underscore summary underscore df data frame. The entire process took around 1 minute and 10 seconds. Let me now go forward and show you the amount of memory this particular data frame is consuming. So this is occupying around 8.19 GB in my RAM. If I hover over here, I have a 12.7 GB RAM out of which 8 GB is being occupied by this particular data set that I have. Okay, so this is where we are in terms of using a pandas data frame. Now if I quickly show you the first 5 rows of the data frame. So you have two columns, a job link column which contains the URL of the job that is posted on LinkedIn and you have a job underscore summary column which kind of summarizes what the job requirements are. Okay. Now let's load the second data set. So we have successfully loaded the second data set which is job underscore skills. The entire execution took around 11.2 seconds. And these are the first five rows of the data set. Again, here what you have is a data frame containing two columns, job underscore link and job underscore skills. The first one had summary, the second one had skills. Okay. Now let's go forward and load the third data set that we have. So the entire CSV was loaded in around 10 seconds. And this is the data frame that I have. So I have a column called as job link. Last process time got summary got NER is being worked. Job title, company, job location, first scene, the city, the country, the position, the job level and job type. So these are some of the columns that are part of this particular data set. Okay. Now let's perform some data analysis on this particular data sets that we have. I'm currently utilizing 9.4 GB out of the 12.7 GB that is allocated to me. So everything is happening on the RAM currently because pandas inherently uses your CPU memory. Okay. So I quickly close this. Now if I have a question to answer. That is which companies and roles have extremely long job summary. So if you go here, here is the summary column that is there in the first data frame, which is job underscore summary underscore DF. Okay. Now I go here, I create a new column called as summary underscore length. And in this particular column, I calculate the length of the job underscore summary column and store it into this particular variable. So here it kind of took one second. So as you can clearly see, we've generated the length of every job summary and we've saved it into this particular column called as summary underscore length. Now let's go forward. Now what I do is I merge two data frames. The first is the job postings DF and the summary DF. I perform a left join on it and I kind of want to join it based on the job link. Okay. So now when I run this, the entire join operation will happen on the CPU and this process takes around three seconds for the entire execution to happen. Now, if I want to do a group by with respect to the company and job title, and I want to 
aggregate based on the average summary length that is there then this is the amount of time for the entire execution to happen so this is a simple analysis that i have done using pandas again the entire execution takes 3 seconds so now how does the job length of summary vary by location so here i am doing a group by again and i am performing the aggregation of mean whatever new data frame is created i reset the index and then i sort the value based on job title job location and summary length so i quickly run the cell so the entire execution took around 5.52 seconds which is considerably decent for the data set that we have but can we accelerate this given if we have like a high end production environment and if we have so many records to kind of go through can we accelerate the entire process is where qdf will come into picture now the first thing that i'll do is i'll install qdf and you'll have to install the correct version of qdf as well so here is the command i'll quickly run this for the installation to go through so i'll quickly restart the session if this pop up doesn't populate for you then what you can do is you can run this particular command called as get underscore python kernel dot do underscore shutdown and restart equal to true so you can run this as well just for safety sake i'll kind of run this again although i've already restarted my kernel but i'll restart it again so now i have a fresh session up and running what you need to do in order to use qdf is just this piece of code there is literally no change in whatever code that i've executed so far and all you have to do is sit back relax use your gpus to your advantage and maximize the performance of what you want to carry out so this is a command that you will have to enter and then you will have to import pandas as pd so i'll quickly run this so qdf has been successfully loaded now the previous timings are also mentioned here so this will give you a reference in terms of the speed up that you can get by using qdf so i'll quickly start with the import statement which was taking around 1 minute 10 seconds so i'll quickly run this so it takes around 4.29 seconds so a file which is around 8 gb has been loaded into the gpu within 5 seconds previously it was taking around 1.10 seconds now it's down to around 4.29 seconds isn't this amazing the same activity for the second data set previously it was taking 11.2 seconds now it will take 552 milliseconds from 11 seconds we are down to 552 milliseconds data set 3 took 10 seconds around 9 seconds or 10 seconds now qdf will accelerate this to 457 milliseconds this entire execution of finding out which companies and roles have extremely long job summaries this entirely was taking around 1 second now it takes 52 milliseconds every piece of code that i'm kind of executing right now is giving me a large speed up like a multi fold speed up with respect to what was previously existing and what is happening right now using qdf if i execute this the previous execution was taking around 5.52 seconds if i run this now it takes 572 milliseconds as you've just seen QDF can now process large number of rows of tabular text data using pandas code on a GPU. For more information regarding QDF, I've attached the links in the description section of the video. Feel free to check them out. Well, this is all that I had in today's video. I wanted to show you how amazing Rapid QDF 24.0 it releases and how you can start using it without changing a single line of code. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more such informative video, do make it a point to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching the video.